Hey, this is Riker, and today we're going to be designing a Cassegrain telescope. This is a modified Ritchie Cretion telescope, however you pronounce that, that has a doublet near the focus to help with field curvature correction and also lateral color correction. Let's go ahead and get started with a brand new lens. Okay. So we're going to go to System Explorer. We're going to do a 350 millimeter entrance aperture. We're going to go to our field of view and we're going to change our, we're going to add a field and that's going to be at 0.175. And then we're going to also add another field and that one's going to be at 0.35 degrees. We're going to go to wavelengths. Now, normally you don't have to select wavelengths for a mirror telescope, but we're going to be adding in a lens. So let's go to actually settings and select the visible wavelengths, FDC. And then let's go ahead and today I'm feeling like using O'Hara. So let's go ahead and bump O'Hara up, up and do shot down. Okay. Let's go ahead and cobble together just a traditional Ritchie Cretion telescope. And we're going to do that pretty quick. So our material, this is a new one for you, is mirror material. So this just tells uh, ZMAX, um, this tells the ray tracer that at this surface you're going to reflect instead of refract. Um, let's go ahead and give this a minus 2,000 millimeter radius of curvature. And let's start it off with a conic constant of negative 1. That is a parabola. If you hit F1 on your keyboard or go up here to help, you can also go and click on, I think it's the help system. Yep. So we can click on that. And we're going to go ahead and search for conic Let's see standard surface is what i want and that's what we have right here our surface type is the standard surface and this is our equation and it gives us a whole bunch of descriptions about uh, this surface for example it tells us values of k the conic constant less than negative one gives you a hyperbola negative one is a parabola between negative one, zero is an ellipse, and then you got spheres and oblate ellipsoids. Okay, so it's pretty handy. Um, just by varying this one little parameter here, you can get a whole range of surfaces. So we're going to start off with negative one. I'm going to hit this little arrow here so I can see everything. And we're going to go ahead and change this thickness here to negative 875. Okay, hit insert on your keyboard or right click and hit insert and we're going to add in another mirror and we're going to give this one a radius of curvature of negative 700 and then on this final surface we're going to do a marginal ray height solve okay i may have gotten things mixed up here let's give this one negative 750 yep that's what i'm looking for okay and let's right now we don't really have a clear picture of what's going on let's go to the analyze tab and hit cross section view and we're going to pick this up and move it over here and we can see the beginnings of our telescope now let's go ahead and add some comments this is our primary this is our secondary and let's try and make these look kind of nice let's go to draw on the um the tab actually the property tab I guess that's what this is called and let's change the mirror substrate to be flat and we're going to give it a thickness of 60 millimeters and we're going to go to aperture now we're going to go ahead and give this one an aperture it's going to have a circular aperture um, 175 okay and we're going to do a minimum radius of 50 millimeters and let's hit update and now we've got a very nice looking realistic primary mirror and let's go to our secondary mirror now we're going to keep its aperture the same but in the draw tab 
the draw section, we're going to go and make this flat and give it a thickness of 25 millimeters. Okay, so now we've got a nice looking telescope and we're going to let it find for us the best conic conic the conic sections conic constants for the primary and secondary mirrors if you want to see what this is all the time you can go over here right click and hit freeze column to left so that way when i hit go on my arrows when i tab over to the right i can always see which surface which um, component i'm on so that's going to stay negative one and we're going to hit Control Z and Control Z on the second surface. We're going to go to Optimize, Merit Function, and we're going to go ahead and tap down here, Optimization Wizard. We're going to improve our manufacturing yield. Um, right, normally you wouldn't need that, but I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And we're going to hit just apply and it's going to auto populate a bunch of rays and it's also going to if you scroll down through here it's got these high yield operands which are constraining the angle of incidence or angle of refraction uh, it gives you a penalty if you do very steep um, refraction angles or very steep ref reflection angles okay so now we've got our two variables here um, for kicks and giggles, I'm going to go ahead and pick this up and move it over here so that you can see everything that I'm interested in all together right now. Let's hit Control Shift O, or you can hit the Optimize button up here and click Start Optimizing, and it does a lot of good very fast. You'll notice that we're no longer a parabola, we are slightly hyperbolic, and what that's doing is it is creating a little bit of coma here and then down here at this secondary mirror it is fixing all the coma but adding a little bit of um, spherical aberration i might be getting mixed up in how i'm explaining this but uh basically this is um oh yep that's actually what's happening so at the secondary mirror it's creating it's fixing your coma but it's also adding a little bit of spherical aberration and so you need to change the primary mirror a little bit it's kind of constant to offset that added spherical aberration from the secondary mirror that's what's happening okay let's go ahead and analyze and go to our spot diagram and take a look and right now we've got spots that are pretty tight but if we go to the settings here and say well how does it compare to the airy disk well I, I can't see it if i zoom in by scrolling down oh there it is there's my with the black outline black circle representing my air disk so since all the rays are not inside of that, I'm not super close to diffraction limited. So what I can do is add a lens to help with the field curvature that's happening. Oops, um, I don't want to do that. Let's do insert, insert. And I'm going to go ahead and change this to a fixed surface. And let's go ahead and move it back. 25 millimeters and then let's go down here and we're going to insert one more surface and we're going to move this to be um, 17 18 millimeters okay let's say i am interested in putting a nikon z camera or any other mirrorless camera on the back end of this maybe maybe i'll make it 20. Okay, and then our materials, I kind of pre-selected these. Um, SBAH11 and SBSL7. Okay, we're going to give these thicknesses of 8 and 8. And let's go ahead and update this and see what we're looking at. And we're slightly out of focus, and that's okay. We're going to let it vary this thickness. And then we're going to let it vary these radii of curvature. Control-Z, Control-Shift-O. 
Okay, so it's moved the lens, it's changing the radii of curvature. And it's a little bit steep right here. I don't really care for that look. But uh, let's go ahead and look at our spot diagram. And let's show the airy disk. And check it out. All of our spots are within the airy disk, so we are pretty much diffraction limited for the visible wave band. Now, I don't like that radius of curvature. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make it not a variable. Well, let, let me show you something a little fancy we can do. Let's go to the Merit Function Editor. Let's go ahead and insert a few operands. We're going to do a curvature value operand because they don't have a radius operand for some reason. And we're going to go to surface 4. And then we're going to do the reciprocal math operator. And it's going to be going, operating on operand 1. And then we're going to do an absolute value greater than. And we're going to do that for operand 2, because that's where the reciprocal is happening. And let's update. So this is finding the curvature of surface 4. And then it is taking the reciprocal to give us the radius. And now we want to limit that to, let's say it needs to be at least 60 or greater, and give it a weight of 1. And let's do Control Shift O and optimize. Okay, and it fixed up that radius a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and do Control Shift H. Let's see if we can squeeze out a little bit more performance out of this lens by hammer optimizing. It's hammering, it's hammering, and it's not really changing around, not finding a better configuration. Let's go to our spot diagram. And we're still mostly within. Hmm, so what can we do to fix that? So we could try and substitute some glass materials. Control Shift H. Um, whoa. And that did us some good. Hey, there we go. Now we're getting uh, diffraction limited performance. Let's hit F4 on this. FPL 53. Um, this, I think, might be an expensive glass, and we don't know if it's available. Let's go ahead and substitute here as well. Okay, so the, these are getting to be some kind of more exotic glass types. Now, um... I know that this glass combination was working really well before. That might be because this thickness was a little bit less. Nope, it isn't. Okay, um, let's go ahead and... Try that. Okay. All right, so this is doing some illegal stuff, but maybe this wants to be a little bit thinner. Or, yeah, that's way too thin by you. Yep, now I'm just kind of poking things. I can't remember the exact parameters that I put into this. So let's go ahead and save as. Um, Let's call this a mod Richard Creation RC telescope. And let's go ahead and open a new instance of ZMAX Optics Studio. We're almost out of time here. Try and keep these to 15 minutes. But let's see real quick if we can get this to work. Nope. That's why you save things. Oops. Okay. Well, it is what it is on that. Um, but I think there is a combination of thicknesses. Let's see if I can constrain the glass to be a minimum of 4, edge thickness 3, maximum of 10. And apply. And Control Shift O. 
And let's see if we... Okay, so it wants to make these thin. But there you go. Okay, there's your telescope. Thanks for watching.